I, l- I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think, I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. And Drew Show. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this episode of the Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by our people at Squarespace. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring Brilliant Idiots all these years, man. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile, and it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, Use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Big Schultzy, the Hezzy. In the building. What's happening? Chilling, man. I just got back from Africa. Talk to me. Mm. I saw you. You, you. Man, let me tell you something. This is how I know y'all getting money, man. You took the whole crew spur to I always take the crew. To go to Morocco. You do always take the crew, but when you take the crew within 12 hours. That was wild. You know what I'm saying? That was wild. Like, I'm going to see the World Cup. What's the and best we didn't even see the World Cup. It wasn't in Morocco. What? The World Cup is in Qatar. Explain. So Morocco is this unbelievable underdog. Okay. Right? And they had reached the semifinals. And they were playing against France. So there's all these great storylines that are happening. Morocco was colonized by France. So yeah. they're colonized against the colonizer. Morocco's playing unbelievably really? well. How the hell is French Montana's name French Montana and he's from Morocco? Well, they speak French there because they were colonized. Oh. They actually have a good relationship, it seems, okay. with the French. But but I just felt like the energy was so crazy and I wanted to be there for that moment. I love like the what if moment. What if this could happen? I love being involved in something miraculous. So, you know, I was like, fellas. Went to Cleveland so, and they played Golden State. Imagine you were there. And let me tell you something. <laughs> one of the greatest memories I have right now is I was literally in, I think it was Aruba. I was in a hotel with a guy from fucking Cleveland and his girlfriend. And I watched him watch his team. Oh, beat Golden State? In the hotel. Oh, we're watching yeah, yeah, with yeah, a bunch yeah. of like expats and there are a few Americans, a bunch of people from like Europe. And we're just watching in a random hotel in the bar. And it was this, he was fucking crying. We're jumping, we're hugging. And I was like, okay, if we go to Morocco and this happens, you've never experienced energy like that. Nah, I know what you mean. I, I had mean, that experience. So cool. We had to go. So I was just, I wanted to see it. And I just love, this is the first African team that's been to the semifinals. The first Muslim country has been to the semifinals. The first uh, what was it? Arab team. I don't know. What was the other one? I forget the other one. There was like three things that you never. So it's like the entire like North African community was coming behind it. The entire like wow. Muslim community is coming behind it. It was just. So where'd y'all watching? Like a bar in Morocco? In the or? plaza. So the last game was watching was 30,000 people. They just put up a TV, right? Wow. We go watch. And explain, it's like, explain what that is. So that's like being like in the middle of Times Square if the Knicks were playing. Yeah, but only there's not screens everywhere. You're still in a, you know, developing country. Yeah. So they just put up a big screen and put up some speakers and of course torrential downpour. Right? Wow. So the first half we have to go inside to this bar. And we're watching on TVs that are half the size of that. Right? There's two TVs half the size of that and they're just way far away. You could barely see anything. You're just going off of energy and people are smoking inside. Like it was just fucking awesome. I had a, I had experience like that once when I was uh I was in Jamaica, and I was leaving Jamaica, and Us- Usain Bolt was running there in the go. Olympics, there and we I was go. I was in the Oof. airport. Oof! When I tell you Oof. that they stop everything, everything. everything. I'm, I'm 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 not even joking. Like yeah. stop everything. Not yeah. not not like uh accidentally. Yeah. Purposely. Yeah. When Usain runs, yeah. security stops, yeah. everybody stops, and we all just watched Usain run in the airport. And th- just... those Jamaicans lost it. Yep. Lost it, you yep. know? So, yes, I understand that that feeling of energy. Dude, there's a th- I mean, like, I'm so, I'm actually really excited that at 39, I've just discovered soccer, which is the most famous sport in the world. <laughs> it is. But I'm excited because I have the rest of my life to kind of, like, dive into it. But it's just so amazing, especially the World Cup, because every one of these countries has fought each other in war. Like, there's so much history in every single match, especially just in the European ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about, like, centuries, millennia of them just fighting one another. So soccer is this proxy to work out all those old beefs that they've had forever. And you're talking about colonized countries going against the colonizers. You're talking about, like, World War I rematches, World War II rematches. Like, everything is so heightened in a safe enough version of it and people's identities are wrapped up into it. It's, it's fucking so why awesome. why hasn't man. it bled over to America? I think it's starting. Mm. I think it's starting. But we also don't have that history. We don't have that history of war. It's like, 
We don't have the history of war with Europe where yeah, we get yeah, to yeah. play it out. Yes, we were involved in World War I, World War II, but almost like as outsiders. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I mean, you know, every time, every time we go up against somebody, we always remind them. Like if it's USA yeah. versus Japan and some shit, you know, we're saying some things. Who was it this year? It was USA. It was somebody in the World Cup they put on television. Was it the World Cup? And we were in the World Cup. Match. We were in the World Cup. Yeah, yeah we USA made it to somebody was Netherlands. On TV. I mean, they, we had a few games, but we lost in Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was I, definitely um, cool. Morocco is an amazing place, bro. I've it, never been to Morocco. Is, it is amazing, bro. Cultural like you, you go back there and travel again? I've been there before with my wife and I went back again, but just like little subtle things that you don't realize, like in a place where like women are not hypersexualized, like when they do do something, it seems way more naughty. Like we were watching this live band. They were fucking amazing, right? And like the girl was singing and at one point, like the guy got behind the girl and the girl started like twerking a little bit on him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember like looking around at all the homies like, is she going to get killed? Like. <laughs> like, is, are they going to arrest her? Like, that's, that's a real. No, you're right. No. But but it, how crazy is that? If I saw that in the street in New York, I would be like, turn it up. It. Yeah, exactly. If that's nothing. all you got. That's that's it. <laughs> you know, pop a titty for a goon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a goon. So, but the littlest thing felt so spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to have that reset. I've never been to Morocco, man. Speaking of spicy, I had a colonoscopy. Yeah, you called me about that. You woke up hard. How, why is that, you think? <laughs> Can I read the text that you sent me? That's the weirdest thing I ever got in my life. I was glad I was out the country. I, I almost didn't come back. I didn't. I almost didn't come back when you sent me that text message. What yeah. was the text? Yo, yo, you must have still been high or something. I was high shit, as bro. shit, bro. bro you, Anastasia ain't wear off till like later that night. And I'm like, and, go ahead. When I Saturday, 11.49 a.m. I don't need texts like this before noon on a Saturday. <laughs> I just had a colonoscopy, period. Like, literally just got out. It's criminal that a man can give you something. Within 10 seconds, you're knocked out. And then he's in your butt. Not to mention, I woke up with a crazy hard dick. This shit not right. <laughs> it seemed very right it seemed exactly the, what you wanted Man, to be honest with you listen the hardest thing about a colonoscopy what made you text me that <laughs> I do not know bro like I'm really trying to understand no what made you message me like why'd you wake up with a hard dick after a dude was in your ass and then you go I gotta tell Schultz this one this is crazy I'm trying, like, to, figure like, out, I'm trying to figure out who else I sent that shit to cause in my mind I only told my wife that shit yo yeah so Spell mistakes and everything. I knew you was feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> you was still shaking after that. One. <laughs> no punctuation, nothing. You just need Listen, to get man, that shit out. They told me when I went to go get my colonoscopy consultation, they told me to come back when I'm 45, right? <laughs> but I have a history of it in my family. So we didn't have a history of it in my family. They're like, all right, you can get the colonoscopy. I went to go get the colonoscopy. First of all, everybody should go get a colonoscopy when you get around that age. But the hardest part about it is the What's prep your the dick? day before. No. <laughs> the hardest part about it was the prep the day before because you got to take these pills. Oh, yeah. You got to flush the system. Flush your whole system out. Yeah. Which is like, you know, you can't even leave the house. Like, you got to be by that toilet. Let right? me continue this conversation. I go, I, I said, more. how you wake up hard? You go, bro, I have no idea. I go, did you ask? You said, no, nah, I was kind of out of it and couldn't believe the anesthesia, anesthesia worked so well. <laughs> Doctor was like, in 10 seconds, you'll be out. And when you wake up, it'll be over. And I woke up and I was like, Doc, we just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Are you sure you didn't say that? <laughs> you think I made up that last part? Is that, is that Yo, you I'm not going to lie, yo. That shit is wild, dog. You ever had the anesthesia that they put in your... I never had anesthesia before. Have you ever right. had anesthesia? No. What was the anesthesia? Blue chew? Bro. <laughs> is that what they gave you? I don't know, but whatever that shit was, the doctor goes, you ready? In 10 seconds, you're going to be... In my mind, the last, I'm like, yeah, right. I don't... You had it before, Chris? I don't remember. I mean, Adios. black out. And when you wake up, you, somebody got to wake you up. And I'm like, the fuck just happened, yo? And yeah. then you wake up. They, all they tell you is, turn over on your left side. <laughs> so you turn over on your left side and you wake up on your left side. Ass tooted in the air. And, then when, I, and then when I rolled over, Whoa. I rolled over, I got the big stiffy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, why the yeah, fuck? How, I would, that, that you weren't concerned at all? The doctor was sucking you off? Or something? <laughs> 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 yeah, that could have happened. I don't you know. You know what? You'll never know. I, I just, You'll never know. I just know that's what I, I, when I rolled over, one of my first like thoughts was, 
when I do like this on my chin. Yeah, 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 that's what he said. When too. I rolled over on my back, I'm like, <laughs> why do I got the big stiffy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The stiffy, well, where'd the stiffy come from? Nah, they didn't hit nothing. They sucked on it. <laughs> they sure I, there's man. no way you don't know if they sucked on it. You need video, bro. You need video. That's what I want. That. No, all jokes aside. Dead Anytime you do a colonoscopy, they should let us watch the video afterwards. Yeah, especially if you wake up bricked. <laughs> I, need, I just want to see what went on. <laughs> yeah, you me know too. what I mean? <laughs> me too. The anesthesia, the anesthesia wears off later, so you don't feel any soreness in your butthole until way later in the day. The shit is wild, bro. Man, well, how'd it feel later? What you mean, the butthole? Yeah. Very tender. Like tender to like the point where like, it felt like you was doing Kegels. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. when you would do Kegels, it would hurt. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, the thing is trying to keep your butt from doing like the, the this, this. From the squeezing. Yeah. yeah what do yeah. you mean the squeezing? You know, when you squeeze it. The Kegel. Yeah, the Kegel. Yeah. The butt Kegel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a little off, bro. Taylor yeah. said that's your G spot. That ain't your goddamn G spot. That's a little G-spot. off. Taylor, Taylor. We nah, do not have that. a G spot on our that's ass. Good. That is gay <laughs> propaganda. No <laughs> yes, why it are, is. Why are you oh my that? god, I hate when I hear this bullshit excuse. Why do you think? <laughs> the, the, wait, why? Clearly, do you think the I thought community. American Pie started that. I say what? I thought American Pie started that when Stifler was getting um. Stifler yeah, was but getting it's some not it. Seminal fluid comes out, the actual fluid, but no actual semen comes out. What do you mean? You can nut from your butthole? Not nut. It's not nut. You it just, just stimulates you. It doesn't stimulate you. It's just there's a liquid that ends up coming out, but there's no actual cum in it. I don't know, man. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying that y'all have a spot there that turns y'all on. Oh, do we? <laughs> yes. oh, you telling a man about his body? Okay, no, Taylor. Why don't you tell me about my body? How about this? Have you ever had, this? Your, have you had this? your gooch lick? How about this? You don't have a G-spot. Yes, I do. The gooch ain't the G-spot, though, Taylor. You talking about I know, inside. No, no, no. I know. I'm talking about inside, too. Y'all no, have there's no I do believe that if there. there was really a G-spot in our buttholes, it'd be more conversation about it. It's really not a conversation about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's, it's not that, like when you take a shit, you start nutting. Like if point. we had a G spot in our asshole when we were shit, we would nut. That I shit think is so. coming down. Someone's pushing But up. you don't think the shit would tickle it a little bit on the way down? Yeah, it's going to push against it. That's the same thing I'm asking about. Like, What do you mean? Like um, when you go on like a horseback ride, like that shit hits your clit, it feels good. Or a roller coaster. It's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah. We don't have that. Exactly. Yeah, because y'all cr- Why do you think and, women and, need a ride and, side and saddle? Are... <laughs> and why would our creator they, make they it so hard to reach? nuts all over a horseback. You don't no. know that? <laughs> why Why do you... That's why women have to ride side saddle. Because <laughs> these horny sluts were coming all over these stallions. You know? It was crazy. Yeah. No, for that's real. true. They started using it as conditioner for the mane. That's the horse's facts. Mane. Ew, that's facts. Yes. No, for real. No, People wonder why the, the horse's mane. mane looks the way it does. It's a that's fact. what it was. Back in the day, instead of like wiping it off, yep. they would just like brush yep. it through the mane. Yep. You didn't this know that? This is true. These are true facts that we made up. If your G-spot was in your butt, why yeah. would the, your creator make it so hard to find? You know what there's, I'm saying? There's no G-spot oh, in the God. butt. Like, this is... Listen, if I was a gay dude, I would say the same shit to straight guys. You know, you're not... You word up. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, your G-spot's really in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 who is it? You I can see help American you find Pie, it. right? Yeah. You see how Stifler got turned on? Exactly. But... Gay people, like, they clearly enjoy it. Taylor, stop trying to tell us about our bodies. It's the only hole they can fuck. <laughs> the, you know what I mean? Whether they enjoy it or not, that's what's there. You got to work with what you're given. Salute to the LGBTQ community. I don't want to talk about them this week because they said that we be uh, appropriating gay culture. You know what I mean? What you mean? I don't want I don't want, to, I don't want them to feel like I was appropriating gay culture. Wait, well, how are we appropriating gay culture? Because remember, we had the conversation last week about, yeah. uh, you know, whether I'm a bottom or a top. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was saying how I got power top energy, so I was on a, uh, not that that's neighborhood talk. Forget neighborhood talk. Go to the go to the the great Instagram of gay, gay Instagram, ma- gay magazine. I love this Instagram, by the way. <laughs> I, whenever I get posted on here, this this Instagram. Oh, I don't know if you uh, listen the to the start of this podcast, Instagram. but you're <laughs> going right back up to the gay magazine, <laughs> folks. What? No, your colonoscopy, this, bro. This right here. Is the funniest Instagram, bro. At okay. least when they post, like, yo, these they are they are so mad about. Well, no, not not all of them are mad. Let me take that back because they're actually having a great discussion about straight men like us who are comfortable having these kind of conversations. But then there are other people saying that we're appropriating gay culture and they need heterosexual men <laughs> to stop appropriating gay culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, comment that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hey, why did, I really, I'm losing my eyesight. 
<laughs> read it, Taylor, because I can't read it. I fuck with Charlemagne. I like how he takes questions <laughs> yeah. that would have most <laughs> yeah. dudes heated and just roll goes, with them. Charlemagne goes to get LASIK surgery, fixes his eyes, wakes up, dick rock. You're <laughs> 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 like, like, yo, I woke up from surgery and get my dick hard as hell. No, yo, where'd you go like, get LASIK? Yo, I went to the colonoscopy guy. He <laughs> said he could do it. So I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would love any doctor to tell me why that is, though. I don't want to Google this information. I tried Googling it, but I'm like, this, I, don't, I don't even know what to begin to why, Google. What is I googled like why you wake up with the stiffy there ain't no after you, a colonoscopy. Yeah. You wake up with stiffy. <laughs> that, but I wonder if there's a regular thing. I want to know why this nah, happened. Bro, nah. you know? No, 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 no. <laughs> that doctor was sucking Throw you down, off. Taylor. You were getting sucked on, bro. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scroll down some more. There's one that come is Come on, so Taylor. Just scroll down. Yo, let me tell you. LGBTQ community, let me tell you something. This we is- are gay. Man, shut up. We are gay on this podcast. This one guy said, my people can't make up their mind. If he would have gotten angry saying I'm straight, don't come with don't come with me with that gay shit. We would be up in arms talking about his homophobia. Being able to have some type of education on the community is a great thing, in my opinion. He's able to laugh and have fun with the interview. I Yeah, I agree. Scroll down. All right, there, right, there, right there, this one. This guy, he said. I don't, we are losing our culture to the pseudo straight man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, s- sex isn't your culture. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think being gay is a culture. No, no, sex. We're talking about the sex, the act of sex. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. act of sex isn't culture. That's not unique. I agree. But I think what he means. Culture is like the 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 language but the that's what we're dance, using we're doing that connectivity though. we're using their language yeah but we're gay <laughs> yo sons do you don't tell me i'm not gay i come in here once a week i'm gay i'm gay from tuesday 10 a.m to about 12 noon on a tuesday your boy is gay <laughs> gay big gay big gay big sexy <laughs> big gay, big Schultzy. Hands on my knees and Riddell Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hands on my knees and Riddell I'm a You made me think about something, though. There is something to that, right? What? Not that you being. I can't be gay. Not that you for being gay. But no, you went to Morocco. Yeah, I went what to Morocco. What did you do in Morocco? You embraced their culture, right? Hey, thank you. I was, I'm around. You embraced their culture. You went I'm to North celebrate African. their culture. You went and watched the game in the Deep plaza Madrid. with them. Like you went to Morocco to be a part of the culture. I wanted to be North African. Okay. So it's the same thing, right? It's just yeah. like, yo, if we use the language, I listen, I think I, I use the language because I thought that was the language. I thought that's what they're referred to. Bottoms, tops. That's you know what, what I mean? we call each other. And I do think we I do, are gay. I do think gay lingo is hilarious. I used to love re- listening to the read just to listen to Kid Fury's the sympathy he had towards bottoms, the empathy that he would show towards bottoms. They do. How do you, how do you, you know, tell it, Mike? Tell, how do you tell know? Tell about they do. You know everything about Trav assholes is, today, huh? No, Trav, you telling me. Uh-huh. Bottoms have a tough life. Yeah, he was like, what do you, what do you mean when we say t- <laughs> define tough life? Yeah, Andy yeah. had a tough life. You know what I mean? <laughs> what do you mean no, tough like, life? They just basically look down on them. Like they like to fuck because uh, Travis a top, but he likes to fuck them. But they do live like they messy bottoms, like you said before. See, I don't want to have this conversation with no LGBTQ members. Anyway, but uh, so we're gay, man, and that's okay. <laughs> Yo, it's okay to be gay. It's okay to be gay from 10 a.m. to 12. Follow gay Instagram, though. G-A, what is it? G-A-Y-E, Taylor? Gay Magazine. Gay Magazine. Gay. Follow Gay Magazine I'm Instagram. I'm following it right now. Nah, it's, it's actually a really good Instagram. I'm following it right now. Uh, What? Uh, did you see the uh the tweet? What tweet, bro? That Duval posted. I did see it. Let's pull this tweet up. No, what? no, I did see it. Oh, you got it? Damn, why? We got to pull that thing closer, man. I might need to go see the goddamn Latex to get a brickie for real. <laughs> um, Little Duval says, if you can't afford to work for free for some years, then the entertainment business oh, is I not what you, you want to be in. I thought you go to about, school or yeah, learn a trade. What other tweet? I thought you were talking about the um, the uh, Gunner. Oh, tweet. let's do that. You want to talk? Let's go. I mean, go I, I'm obsessed with a couple I had things. that third on the list, so we are in order. We went Morocco, colonoscopy. We could go to YSL. Okay. I had YSL third on the list. Okay, so so Duo comes out with the tweet, which I thought you were talking about. 
which basically said, yo, don't pin snitch on Gunna until you hear Thug talk about it first. I agree with this that. This could all be part of Thug's plan. This just goes to everybody on the internet thinks they're an expert at whatever the topic of the moment. Mm. If it's COVID, then everybody's all of a sudden a scientist and mm. they know about vaccines and all types of other shit. If it's, you know, something to do with prison and jail, now all of a sudden everybody's a lawyer. If it's a politics, everybody's a political strategist. Like everybody turns into an expert of whatever said topic is. That's facts. Like just 10 minutes ago, we were experts about LGBTQ things. No, it wasn't. You were speaking from the perspective of a gay man. <laughs> you were too. No. You're gay. <laughs> According to Gay Magazine, I'm more of a verse top. Which is part of the gay umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> You're within the gay umbrella, dude. <laughs> Listen, we embrace our gay brothers and sisters, man. Shout out to the gays. That's right, baby. We're under that gay umbrella, and we're under the umbrella because it's raining men. Listen. Ooh. Um, Ooh, I see what you did right there, OG. You see what you did? That was a throwback. <laughs> that was right there. You know who's going to appreciate that? The, the LGBTQ. LGBTQ community, baby. Oh, the LGBTQs are loving that I'm not right an OG there. either. I'm OT, baby. What does that mean? Original trade. Oh, I thought you said original top. <laughs> <laughs> You're not an original top? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Come on now. Listen, let's talk about Gunna. Uh, um, I, I was Speaking confused, of the gays, I was confused, let's talk about Atlanta rap. I was confused by this whole situation because I didn't know who Gunna... I didn't, I'm like, who, who's he telling on? I don't see who he's telling on. I didn't see that when I watched... He admit... He, okay. From what I saw... And again, I'm assuming because I, I'm getting so obsessed with these trials, but uh, I'm assuming that this was all part of the plan because Thug's sister came out and she was like, why are you even saying that about Gunna? That's right. That's not the case, blah, That's blah, right. blah. And I'm assuming that Thug's sister is having conversations with Thug. I, listen, when I'm I saw, assuming. Yeah, when I saw Gunna do this and then I saw the other guy from YSL plea and then I saw... Thug in court the next day and it's some evidence that they can't use about against a, him. Yeah. You know, I, I thought to myself, oh, why is that just smarter than everybody else? That's that's what I'm looking at. Now, this is coordinated. Exactly. Now, it is an interesting situation because he did admit that YSL was a gang. He did admit that he said that the guns in the car weren't his and he was the only in the car with Thug. So that means they... It's alluding to the fact that maybe they're thugs. Did they say? I thought they said that they weren't the only two people in the car. Though. So maybe that was the that's case. The other as well. thing I heard, it was like they were. It's unclear whether it was, yeah. they were the only ones in the car. Yeah. So maybe that's the case as well. I'm just saying I like what Duval said, which is don't don't jump to that because this all could be part of the master plan. I, yo, it looks like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't. I listen. I'm not gonna sit. I'm not gonna sit here and act like a legal expert because I'm not. But I see all of these people. Taken pleas, which is the best case scenario. Bro, but the pro the one problem is the plea deal was incredibly generous. Well, they didn't really was, have a case on Gunner, though. They didn't really have nothing on him. Well, they could get Rico if he's part of this gang. Conspiracy. But it's just like, okay, and? So, what, eight months time served, that's it, nothing else? Eight months time served, uh, pro I think, what, probation for four years? Because it was a five-year sentence with four suspended. Doesn't, doesn't that mean you're on parole or probation or something? Maybe. And then he got a whole bunch of community service and everything else. I mean, listen, man, I mean, the best case scenario is those guys plead, they come home, they keep the YSL movement going. I don't think that they're going to just let Thug come home. But I mean, Thug might get a way better sentence than he originally was. You know what mm. I mean? Thug might do five to ten or something like that or five to seven, you know what I mean? Which is better than fucking 30, 40, 50. At least you get five to ten. Yeah. You know, you have, you'll, you still, you'll still be somebody when you come home. Right. You know what I mean? People will still care when you come home. So I, I don't know. I just look at this situation and I'm like, man, we love the label people, man. And this don't, this just don't go back to just gonna. I think that our need to understand things makes us just label things which lessens our understanding because we're not even discussing the actual issue. For example, Elon Musk. I saw two articles this week. Mm. One was in the New York Times and it was like, people are saying Elon Musk is a conservative, but it's not that simple. The Atlantic was like, Elon Musk is a far right activist. And I read both those articles and I thought to myself, who gives a fuck? Mm. And the reason I say who gives a fuck because we're not discussing the issue. The issue is, is social media out of control? Ah. Should social media be regulated? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is social media doing more harm than good right now? We're not even having that discussion. What does it matter what Elon Musk's politics are? 
Mm. What does it matter what Mark Zuckerberg's politics are? Does it matter? I think it matters if those politics are influencing the platforms. Mm -hmm. Because you want the platforms to remain ideally politically neutral. And what was exposed from Twitter before is that there are far more Twitter employees that were left-leaning and therefore they are willing to make accommodations for certain political groups that were left-leaning. They also did it for right-leaning. There were just far less employees there that could make those things happen. You're right. So with that said, what do you do? FCC rules and regulations, because FCC rules and regulations are supposed to keep people from being partisan. Maybe it's possible that Elon Musk is learning that that moderation and regulation is kind of necessary on a platform like this. Yes. Like he kind of went into it going, we're just going to let free speech rock. And then all of a sudden they started posting like where he was and like where his family was. Yes. And then they, he was like, all right, well, maybe we need to regulate some things. Maybe we need to moderate some things. So, so maybe Twitter was a little bit too left leaning or a little bit too integrated in government. It'd be nice if it was a little bit more neutral and it wasn't, you know, hiding certain stories, et cetera. Like it did obviously with the I Hunter agree. Biden situation. That being said, I think we all agree that a certain amount of moderation is important. If you even look into freedom of speech, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Why can you not? Because you could actually hurt people's lives. So there has always been limitations on free speech, especially if it's going to protect human life. So the biggest broadcast platform in the world right now is the Internet. Yeah. It's social media. It's YouTube. It's bigger than television. It's bigger than radio. It's bigger than podcasts. You have to to regulate it. This should have the same FCC rules and regulations that all those other platforms have. It's too big and it has too much influence for it not to be. Mm. Simple as that. So it's like But that what is- what should the regulation like for me I'm I'm a big freedom of speech guy, especially as it affects, you know, comedy, right? And like satire. This is what I love. So I want people to be able to make jokes. I want people to be able to say things. I think the problem is is when you become the arbiter of truth. That's a sticky situation. When you take something down for being fake news, but the truth or what is real is defined by your political party's opinion, now we get in a shaky situation. Well, I think when it comes to that, especially when it comes to the news, man, just just vet it. We're trying to get away from opinion-based news on these traditional platforms. Here's a perfect example that Duval brought up, Mm -hmm. right? Instagram was was banning certain accounts and like shadow banning people and punishing people for saying certain things that were viewed as bullying because they were unaware of the culture the they culture. were coming from. Yeah. Right. So when uh when somebody goes, you stupid or this dude dumb, oftentimes it means he's hilarious. But Instagram was looking at that and just seeing those words and going, oh, you're bullying. This is a bad account. We need to ban this person or blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. So clearly they're unaware with black influence and culture sayings vernacular. Absolutely. <clears throat> if they don't fix that, they essentially make using black slang illegal on the internet. Absolutely. That's not fair to black people that want to use black slang or white people that want to use black slang. I agree wholeheartedly. So my thing is making like, a, a cultural inf- uh, illegal. Instead of having cultural police, let's use the system that's already in place. Which is? The FCC. Mm-hmm. We have a system already in place that has worked for TV and radio all but these years. But it's also dumbed down, not dumbed down, but it's also made TV so neutered. No, that's that- us. That's these. That's those cultural police you're talking about. That's those people who work at Instagram who are looking at black content and like, no, that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. That's this woke culture. That's not the FCC. Because think about it. The FCC didn't change. Mm. Society changed. Think about what we used to watch in the 90s on television, bro. Think about what you used to watch on, the, in, on TV in the early 2000s. That never changed. It's the way people's sensibilities and culture and society has changed. Not the FCC. I'd have to look at it. How Stern was fine until motherfuckers started getting a little too sensitive. And he said, you know what? I'm going over here. And, I and, mean, he, he was getting and, canceled left and right. And he was getting too many fines. Yeah. But he was using... From the FCC. He was using the words that he shouldn't have been using. <laughs> well, he was playing around it. He was trying to find a way yeah. to say the words that he couldn't say. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, I, I'd have to look and see what the regulations are from the FCC because I think one of the reasons why the internet absolutely exploded is because you could put like real pure authentic content out there that wasn't 
kind of shackled and neutered by these rules. Now, it might not only be rules from the FCC, but also from advertisers. They are maybe terrified. They're like, I don't want to advertise on this if you're saying a curse word. I don't want to advertise on this if there's too much nudity. I don't want to advertise this if it's too salacious. And then all of a sudden, the internet has all the salaciousness. It has all the curse words. It has all the authenticity. And then all the eyeballs are going to gravitate towards authenticity. I I, I agree with that, but I think that's the second step to why the internet exploded. The first step why the internet exploded is just because the point of entry is nothing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Convenience. Like anybody can get on the Convenience. internet. Anybody yeah. can open a YouTube page, social media page. Anybody can start a podcast. You can't just get on television. Well, yeah. back in the day, you couldn't just get on television. Yeah. You couldn't just get on radio. You know what I mean? So it's just the point of entry was nothing. Yeah. There's no cover fee. Yeah. So it gave everybody a voice. So then who decides what is okay and what's not okay to say? Who decides what's the truth and what is not the truth? Like, I, it's really tricky, man. The, yeah, the, the truth thing is tricky because even news networks play with that, right? Like, everybody got it. That's why, that's why they're trying to get away from opinion-based news, right? Because the Foxes, the CNN, the MSNBCs, they just lean to the party. Yeah. You know, Fox leans right, MSNBC leans left, CNN leans left. CNN's trying to be more center now, you know, because they have Republicans on as well as Democrats, but you just got to see where that's going to go. So it's like the truth is tricky, but everything else you can regulate. What I mean when I say regulate is you can't just post any story online. Mm. Bro. I can't just you can't. People wonder why certain stories don't reach the main screen because they can't do that. They're held liable. Mm. They'll get sued. You can't just report something that's false just because it's the hot topic on YouTube. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you got to vet things. I think it should be the same way on social media. And we'll be and I, we, we had this conversation earlier this year. We'll be saving so many broadcasters, bro. Because you see these broadcasters getting hit with these lawsuits Mm. that they're not even ready for. Because in their mind, they're watching other YouTubers do what they're doing. And and, and so they're like, well, it must be okay because everybody's doing it. Mm. That's true. Until somebody jumps on your ass Mm. and shows you that this is uh, defamation. Or shows you why you can't broadcast misinformation like a Alex Jones getting hit for a billion dollars. Yeah. You can't just get online and, you know, spread lies about people. Well, you shouldn't be. You can, but you shouldn't be able to is what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's where the FCC will come into play. Where What is the difference between freedom of speech and a defamation lawsuit? Why are you allowed, why are you not allowed to defame someone? Because if, if it's not true, if it's a lie, then a person can sue you for defamation. And if that defamation causes harm to that person. You know what I mean? Whether so, it's so, financially, whether it's emotionally. You see mm-hmm. people sue for emotional distress, all types of stuff. Right. No, I, I'm, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be able to. Mm-hmm. I'm just understanding, like, how does that, how did people even in the past handle that limitation on free speech? I think it's the difference between having an opinion and just straight up lying on somebody. You know what I mean? Like, right. you can you can have an opinion and clown somebody, clothes, or, uh, you know, what they look like or what you may think about them. But, you know, if you be like, and this has happened, you've seen it. Oh, that person's gay. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I'm suing you for, 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 for defamation now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or that person's a, a thief. That person stole from such and such. It's like, you can't say that if it's not true. Right. What's your factual proof? What's your evidence? You know what I mean? You can say allegedly. Yo, if OJ wanted to, OJ can sue you for calling him a murder. If, if you get on a podcast and something and you say, OJ Simpson is a murderer. Mm. He committed a murder. He can sue. Wow. Because he never got, he, he didn't get charged for murder. Yeah, that's true. That's defamation. Yeah. That's that's true. F, but that's what that's what FCC rules and regulations come into play. And it's not going to make the, people think it's going to make the internet less fun. No, it's not. Not at all. You know what I mean? I mean, legislation I, always makes things less fun. I, I don't think so. It just, I think there's a, there's a scale and it's, you know, safety and fun. You and, perform in front of large crowds all the time, shows. Yeah. You ain't never had nobody shut you down for inciting a riot. You ain't never had nobody shut you down for inciting violence. You ain't well, never called, you ain't never called fire. You never yelled fire in the crowd. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those I've are, had venues not allow me to perform there because of my material. That's on them, though. That's not because of the FCC. That's because that's why I keep going back to the. But well, what if the FCC does that to a human being? What I, if the FCC comes to this podcast and they go, "Hey, you're making these jokes that are insulting to certain groups. We're gonna have to shut you down. You can't have a platform anymore. We don't allow this on the internet." I think the FCC only does that when it's allowed when it's hate speech. But what's defined as hate speech? Like a joke to us might be interpreted as hate speech to a group. 
That's why freedom of speech is so important is because you can never know what somebody is offended by. I'm with you. But once again, we always have this conversation about free speech. You're not free from the consequences of that speech. Yeah, I didn't say you're free from that, the consequences. That's the other thing about the Internet. And I think that's why we get upset. We was having this conversation last night on Hell of a Week. And I'm like, you know, because because uh, we had uh, Alice, uh, Alice Stewart on from hmm. CNN. And, you know, she was saying how she hates how these people can hide behind these cat profiles <laughs> and say whatever they want. And I was like, well, they hide behind the cat profile because they pussy. But yeah. the thing is, that's what I think we get upset about. Yeah. Because Schultz, you say something that pisses somebody off or insults somebody, they can hold you accountable. But these, these motherfuckers get online and say anything and hide behind these cat profiles. Yeah. Who do we hold accountable? Yeah. So as Chico said last night, if you want to Talk your shit. <clears throat> you got to put a name with that shit, bro. Yeah. An address or something. Yeah. Stand on that shit. That's why I don't respect a lot of those people in those spaces. I respect people who put a face with that shit and who got something to lose and still stand on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's when that's when the respect comes for, comes comes from from me. It's easy to just, you can, of course you can sit in your basement all day and say whatever about mm. whoever behind a profile. That's not gangster. Why are we respecting that? Mm. I don't respect yeah, that. I kind of like that idea that that uh, Elon wanted to make sure everybody was verified, not necessarily blue check, but like every account that's on Twitter is attached to a real person. We need, we need to know who you are. We need to yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. who you are. Yeah. You can have a satire yeah. account. You can have an account where you make fun of people. You can do all these things, but we need to know it's attached to a real person and kind of who that person is, because then it becomes different. You know, you and I operate in a very different world in that, like, when we say something about somebody, it's going to get back to them. Immediately. Boom. They know. They know. Boom. So it's a little bit different than these, the anonymity that most people experience on the internet where they can say whatever they want about whoever they want and they never have to deal with it. You're getting DMs. I'm getting DMs from people that are salty about the things that were said. That's right. And we might have to bump into these people. That's right. So it's not like we don't deal with the repercussions for the things we say. We have to measure whether we want to say some shit or not every single time. So there are repercussions That's for right. what we say, right? But the average person, yeah, maybe not. And that kind of freedom, that must feel good, but it also could create a very toxic place on the internet. Man, you ain't lying, y'all. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. I, I, there has to be accountability. That's it. But isn't it go- weird that like, we're going to be, we're going to suffer in terms of what we're allowed to say to fix the problem that is the anonymous people on the internet, what they're saying. I don't think we're going to suffer, Schultz. No, no, uh, 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 you suffer is maybe the wrong word, but we will be uh, inhibited in some way. W- there will be certain things that we would like to say that will be removed from us to solve a problem that isn't us. It's not caused by us. I hear what you're saying. I can For j- example, the people that go out to, uh, to the people that go out uh, drinking, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say there's some alcoholic comes in, drives drunk, kills somebody. And let's say the state comes in, they go, that's it. Everybody's only allowed two drinks, right? And we were like, well, we were only having three drinks. <laughs> this motherfucker's having 10 drinks. Why can't I have three? Why do all of us have to suffer for one asshole? But they do have those type of rules, though. They do? Yeah, if you're in a bar, like a bartender has to stop serving you after a certain point because then the bar is held liable. Like if the bar knows that if they're looking at you and they know that you're drunk and you're saucy, mm-hmm. after a while, they got to stop serving you because if you get in the car. Uh, that very rarely happens. That, that No, nah, I've heard those cases happen often. No, no. Yeah, people get kicked out of bars for being drunk, but at the same time, no, like, no, 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 I've heard of bars being held liable. Yeah, kind of. I mean. I'm just saying you can't live in a world where, like, there's no consequences and repercussions. No, I'm not saying that. I, I'm not saying we don't. What I'm saying is that we're not the issue. The issue is those people that are anonymous on the Internet. So maybe if you have an anonymous account that's not attached to anybody, you have more strict rules in terms of what you can or can't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once you attach that to an actual person and a real account, then you could have more freedom because yeah. we know it's going back to someone. People are way more willing to say some foul shit if you never know who the fuck they are. That's right. So then, yeah, limit their ass. I don't even know if I care about them as much as I care about the people who pretend to be like broadcasters, like actual sources of news mm. online. Mm. I don't know if I care about like the everyday person as much as I care about like the person who pretends to be a news source. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But you could twist and turn everything these days. That's the crazy thing. That's right. Like, I don't believe anything that I read. That's, I and that's satire that I shit is dangerous. I can't believe you're okay with that. You could just yeah. make an Andrew Schultz account, get a verified check and start tweeting wild shit and folks will believe it. Yeah. You don't want that. Yeah, I know. 
I know. I That's don't. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. We need regulation. But you know we just but you know what we just did for the last 15 minutes? What's that? We discussed the issue. Yeah. Not the individual. Yeah. That's what we discussed. Let's have a conversation about the issue. Yeah. To your point, yes, if you know, somebody's too far right or too far left and they let their politics lean into these platforms. That's wrong. But you would not have that problem if you actually had FCC rules and regulations. You know what yeah. I mean? And I don't think nobody ever thought social media and all that shit would get this big. I don't think that we ever thought that we'd be looking to Twitter and everything else as a big, as, as a platform for actual news. I guess we thought that these traditional outlets like the newspapers and the news organizations would always sustain their position. Mm. Then we started to realize all these motherfuckers do is reflect what's going on on social media. Oh, yeah. That's why I think it's silly to get into politics. It's like you can affect culture. The politicians are just going to respond to whatever the culture desires. That's it. So if you affect culture, you can affect politics. But politicians aren't going to dictate the culture to the people. You know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. We dictate the Absolutely. culture and then they have to react to it. If we want a certain thing, they're all going to flip flop on their words and then execute on that specific thing that we want. In my lifetime, I've only seen one president um, our one presidential candidate who became president put his will <laughs> on the people and made people lean towards what he was talking about, literally culturally, like shift culture. DT? DT. Yeah. I never, I personally never saw it. I never saw somebody shift culture with their words mm -hmm. like, 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 like Donald Trump. Mm. I didn't, I've never seen it. You know what I mean? I don't mm. think Obama shifted culture with his words. I think Obama shifted culture with his identity. Because, you know, like his first, like one of his books was titled The Audacity of Hope. Mm -hmm. It was it was a change that people really could believe in. It was like, oh, man, this is what I would want America to be. Mm -hmm. You know, this interracial, I mean, this biracial uh, person leading our country. Yeah. You know, this this man who's embracing everyone, it seems, yeah. you know, like, like I think that's the idea of that. Is what people wanted. But as far as like culture, as far as like this is fake news, you know. No, that motherfucker destroyed information. Like the concept of fake news mm. is quite new. Like mm. I don't remember news being fake in, before Donald Trump. Now I'm sure it was. I just It was. Nobody was calling in. it out. Exactly. He called it out. And now it's to the point where, and maybe this is good, that like I have a distrust of all information that I'm consuming. And maybe this yeah. is good because no, right. maybe I was blindly believing some shit just because it said CNN on it. Or I was blindly no, believing right. some shit because it said MSNBC. And now I'm realizing, oh, wow, they might have a political agenda as well. Yes. So maybe we're getting closer to the actual news. But there is yet to be a news station that has been propped up that's like, hey, this is the truth. What you just said is so true. But think about that from a social media perspective. Mm. Now it's not about what label is on the information. It's just simply about do you believe this information? Yeah. Like if I already have an opinion about something, yeah. all I need is some shit that reinforces That's it. That's it. So I can go on YouTube and find a video. I can go online and find somebody saying something that reinforces mm -hmm. what I say so I believe it. And the truth is always way less interesting. It's way less oh. exciting. What do I say all the time? Nobody cares about the truth when their lives more entertaining. Yeah, and that's the lies are always way better. The truth is way more boring and like reasonably understandable when you actually come yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. But conspiracy is just so much fun. I would way rather listen to conspiracy. I'd way it's just so exciting. Like it's, it's incredible. And that's why I, I, I go back to like we, this Tory and fucking uh, Meg case. But that's but that's why I go back to labels. Yeah. Labels. We got people want to label Gona an informant because of the story. Yeah. Gonna rat it on Doug. Yeah. I can't believe it. His his artist, you yeah. know, the person that he that he put on just right. Like they, yeah. it gotta be the story. So yeah. now it's this whole conspiracy. And that's mm -hmm. why when somebody with common sense like Duval comes in and goes, hey man, I don't think y'all should be saying shit though, Doug does. Yeah. <laughs> that's just common sense. That is, yeah. And what else I find funny? The sister can come out and say, don't call Gunner a snitch. Yeah. The lawyer can come out and say Gunner didn't snitch. They can write all these articles saying, no, that's not how it works. I had an attorney tell me, no, I don't even want it, whatever. But all I'm saying is YSL seems like they're smarter than everybody. But all of those people can say these things and people be like, nah, man, no, uh, no, nah, that ain't true. Yeah. <laughs> I was fucking with one of my homeboys yesterday. I'm not going to say his name, but he was like, don't listen to the lawyer. Listen to me. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's everybody's mentality. Yeah. The lawyer's wrong. Yeah. All right. Which lawyer? The guy who keeps Gunner's lawyer. Oh, Gunner's lawyer. Because Gunner's lawyer posted a statement. was like, he didn't snitch. Like, yeah. his testimony can't even be used. Because something, I, I forgot what it was. I, I might be misconstrued. But what, Megan Tory? Yeah, just, a, there's what? a perfect example. What? Oh, you want to pay some bills? Okay. All right, we can pay some bills and come back and talk about Damn, Taylor, why are you Megan so angry? She, she, she thinks she's producing. Talk space. Let's pay some bills, man. We'll come back and talk about Megan Tory. Talk space. Using Talkspace feels a little like having a mental health professional in your pocket. Talkspace offers both therapy and psychiatry, and being able to reach out to my provider anytime, anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling, knowing that if I need to talk with my therapist, I can just send a message from wherever I am. Working through things in therapy can be tough, but connecting with my therapist isn't, okay? Uh, Salute to everybody out there, man. It is the holiday season, so I know that seasonal depression is real. Okay, seasonal depression is seasonal depression is real. So I know people need, you know, somebody to talk to. So I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. Okay, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you. Typically within 48 hours, you can text video or send voice messages to your licensed therapist. So it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Talkspace is mental health care that meets you wherever you are. It simplifies taking care of your therapy and psychiatry needs because it eliminates the need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions, okay? Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over 40 specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, fooding, eating, and so much more. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest in-the-end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to match with a licensed therapist today. Go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. Schultz, you mentioned Blue Chew. Do you want to do Blue Chew? Absolutely. Blue Chew, the absolute truth, okay? Um, Don't recommend it if you're going to get a colonoscopy like our boy Charlemagne, (laughs) but if you're trying to give your wife the night of her life, your side chick the night of her life, that new girl that you haven't even slept with, but you want to make sure you leave a lasting impression, it's the Chew. Same active ingredients inside Viagra or Cialis, but this is the Chew, the one that we're rocking with and the one that you need in your life. And you're going to get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's right. You just go to Blue Chew. You just go to BlueChew.com slash idiots. You're going to get it for free. Make sure hey. you use that promo code idiots. All you're going to have to do is pay that $5 shipping. So make sure you go do that and then go satisfy that person in your life. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, church announcements. We got anything? Nothing over here? Me neither, bro. I'm disconnected for the year. Um, no breakfast club, no TV going away? show. Yeah, I'm going away uh the end of the month. Where are you going? Uh, well, I'll tell you when I get back. I don't you know. Oh, it's like that. It ain't like that. I just, you know. It's like that. I'm like Elon Musk, baby. I don't let you know. I don't be you got to move in silence. I don't, nobody needs to know the location. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you when I get back. If you see me tell you I've been somewhere, or you see me somewhere, I'm already gone. Really? Believe that. Well, shit. I promise you. I'm going to Costa Rica and uh, Colombia. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, when you going? I think I'm leaving the 23rd. I'm going the 26th. I'll be going the 26th to the 3rd. Okay. Yeah, I'll be going the 26th to the 3rd. I will say, though, thank you for a great year. You know what I mean? Thank you to everybody who's been Amen. supporting, you know, all the projects that we've been putting out this year, man. Um, you know, uh, SBH Productions, you know, me and Kevin Hart's company with Audible, we put out two projects, Finding Tamika and uh, some of 85, both projects absolutely crushed it. Some of 85 was named um, the best, uh, oh, the best, what was it, Chris? Best history, best history? Best history podcast of the year for Amazing. Audible. Amazing. And um, Finding Tamika was named best true crime podcast for Audible, which is huge because true crime is like the biggest Massive. genre going right now. Massive. And Finding Tamika was uh, labeled the number one. And uh, Variety just named Finding Tamika the number five audible story of the year period you know um so so thank you for supporting both those projects thank you for buying uh tamika mallory state of emergency how to win in Did the country we built out? yeah the paperback came out this year oh, the hardcover wow. came out last year paperback came out this year well what do you say i need a co-pack shallow waters That's amazing thank you for supporting that as well um we have a lot we have a lot more books coming out through black privilege publishing simon and schuster uh mm. 
next year. So just thank you, man. Thank you to everybody who watched Hell of a Week this year. Um, when you putting a Dr. Umar book out? Dr. Umar? Umar got books out. No, but you putting it out. Um, I don't know if that would go with Dr. Umar's thing. Why Dr. Not? Umar's all about independence. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is black privileged publishing. I mean, but yeah, but he's all about independence. And I mean, he's been self-publishing so, so far. Mm. It's like, you know, why stop? That's been working for him. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what I think. I think if, you, if you're a self-publisher and you've been self-publishing your books and they've been selling, yeah. you know, why, why, why get with a, a publisher? Unless you just want like maybe wider distribution, maybe. Maybe. You know? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so, Big and Tori, your yeah. thoughts? I mean, I'm just so fascinated by the case. Tell me why. Because both of them seem to be 100% convinced of their own stories. Isn't that how it always is, though? Mm. You don't go to you, you mm. don't go to trial, prosecution, and defense. You don't go there like, okay, I might have been a judge. Yeah, but I think I think what's happening here is is like we've seen them outside of court for so long. Usually, there's like a shooting or something, and the people go to court. It's quickly after, or at least in the next few months, we've seen like this is this feels like years. Like how long ago was that shooting? Uh, Three years, two years ago? ago. So Tori's put out two fifteen fucking albums, made music videos. You know, Meg's won awards and all that kind of shit. And they're both saying completely opposite things happened. And now you look at the first few days of the court case, and all these things that we thought happened, uh, we're we're being told that they did not happen. We're finding out that that everybody's having sex with everybody, <laughs> which, like, which has nothing, which has nothing to do with the case. No, but it's awesome. I don't even understand why that's in the case. Like. I don't care. It's great. It's, I mean, well, no, it's great it actually, story. It does, it does matter if you're trying to imply that there was a jealous rage that caused certain behavior and incited the incident. But you got to name multiple things? Can't you just name one? I mean, it's so much better when you find out that she was just getting split open by everybody. What? <laughs> I mean, Is that true, though? It's most people, guys, right? Like, <laughs> they, they Is it just, true? I, that's what I heard. I heard Sesame Street also ran up in it. Big Dark. <laughs> She did say, no, she did say uh, her boyfriend was embarrassed. So I guess, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I just don't think that has nothing to do with the case. But you know what, though? Yo, that, yo, she should have nipped that in the She should have nipped that in the bud. There's a picture of Party. Uh, it's Partisan Fonte. Yeah, it's, my it's guy, guy Party. There's my a hilarious party. picture because he got a picture with his shirt off and, it, and he has a feminist tattoo. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he tattoo. got to take these dicks. You know what I mean? Like, he can't be angry at it. Like, it's her body, her choice. Nah, nah, you know you, what I mean? You, like, you, you got to support a woman doing what she wants with her body. But even even if you, outside of party and Meg, even if you knew about your significant other's other people, I don't you wouldn't know want about the world shit. to know. I don't want to know about I think you, you could live with it. Like, if you knew your girl's body count, you probably could live with it, but you wouldn't want the I world wanna to know. I don't want to know about any bad shit. I'm too insecure for that. So you don't know... <laughs> That's honest, though. Yeah, I'm honest. That's honest. No, 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 no. So you wouldn't want to know. I don't want to know. You don't want to know your girl's body count. Bro, if I was supporting you my girl. You might need to know, bro. I don't want to know about it, What bro. if she let another comedian hit? I don't want to know about it, bro. <laughs> no, you got to know. I don't want to know about it, bro. You got to know, bro. I don't want to know about it. You got to know, because if you start making jokes about smashing other comedians' girls, you might have to run down on him to watch his fucking mouth. I don't want to know about it. Keep your wife's name <laughs> out, my, out your fucking mouth. No, you seem even more insecure when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know anything about it. None. That's interesting. I mean, do you want to know about it? I mean, listen, ignorance is bliss. That's why they say ignorance is bliss. Right. Because when you don't know, you're happy. That's what I'm fucking saying. I'm with you. I don't know. You want to know the radio don't. personality hooked up with your wife? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I don't know if I would want that information. I really, truly do not know. I know that information ain't necessary for court, though. I'm, it might be. I you want to bring uh, out all the bullshit that you possibly can. It almost feels like they were just trying to make her out to be like a shady character in the eyes of the jury. You know what I mean? As mm. if, you know, a woman sleeping with a bunch of guys makes her shady. You know what I mean? That's what that's what I thought. But well, why were they bringing it up? I don't know. That's my point. Well, I think that part of the fact was that Tori was sleeping with Kelsey and Megan, right? I do not know. And I think that, oh, actually, no, there is a reason. Wasn't Kelsey also sleeping with the baby? I have no idea where are you getting this from. Weren't they? She was rumored to be sleeping with the baby. So what they're trying? What the baby got to do with it? Well, M Meg was also sleeping with the baby. So what they're trying to imply is that Meg stole the baby from Kelsey, stole Tori from Kelsey, stole all these dicks from Kelsey. 
And there's a reason why Kelsey would have so much animosity towards her that she might shoot her because the defense's argument is that Kelsey was the one that shot her. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got now, you. Kelsey is not, what is it called, uh, being uh, charged. So I don't know, man. The way the way I see going, it looks like she might get a perjury charge. Mm-mm. No, she's got immunity. She said, "What the fuck?" She no, she that. don't. They told her on the stand. They said immunity don't mean you can get up here and lie. And they told her that. Wait, they, really? Yes, they told her immunity. They reminded her in court yeah. that immunity does not mean you can get up here and just lie. Well, she said a bunch of things that uh, she already lied about. She admitted to lying, right? She yeah, said she, that in her original statement. But I, they, they're using that evidence now. They're using which evidence? Because she's saying that that didn't happen. The original statement that she made that she said didn't happen, they say they can use that now. Even though she's saying it didn't happen? Yep. Well, that seems flimsy. I don't know, man. You think, what do you think happened? I have no idea, and I think that's the problem. I th- I've been saying from the beginning, sometimes you just got to let things play out. Like, once again, everybody wants to be a lawyer. Everybody wants to be a detective. Everybody wants to be a private investigator. This shit has been playing out in the court of public opinion for two years. You know what's so Literally. interesting? For two years. But what's so interesting about this case is that Tory doesn't need to prove that he didn't do it. He just needs to create a shadow of doubt that it wasn't him. So he just needs the he just needs the jurors to go, well, maybe it was Kelsey. He don't need to prove Kelsey did it. He just needs them to think maybe it was her. That's kind of that's that's possible if you both in the car, the residues on both of you. Meg didn't see who shot her. She's assuming. Nah, Meg did. Meg, Meg, that, that's the thing that people keep forgetting, right? What? Meg is the victim here. Meg said, he did it. I saw him do it. It's kind of hard. Maybe to beat she's the, upset. Maybe it's kind of hard to beat jealous. the eyewitness, bro. Yeah, but, but maybe she's jealous because he was risen up Kylie. Kylie, too? You didn't know that he was risen her up in the pool? What is brisen? Oh, no. What is brisen? I'm old. What does brisen mean? What does brisen, what does brisen mean now before we continue? Huh? So now I feel like the Instagram Riz, people. What the fuck bro, kind, of coach, kind of words are y'all using? Bro, he That's was why you got to shut this shit down. You didn't know bro. Tori's the risenator, bro? <laughs> what is brisen? <laughs> Yo, Tori is the risenator, What does brisen bro? mean, bro? Not briz. Riz. Riz. What does risen mean? He was risen her up. He was kicking that game. Oh, trying to talk to her. Dude, yeah, he had Kylie moist. No, I don't be you invested this? in this He's shit. in the pool kicking crazy riz to Kylie. <laughs> Yo, he was. All I know he is. He got the pool floaties on and everything. <laughs> he's got he's he's kicking crazy game with the pool floaties to Kylie. And then Meg the Stallion was going berserk. She was bucking, bro. He said what in the song, Taylor? About Kylie, how he What's the song? It was like that mixtape he put out during the pandemic. What's the name of the song? We got to stop doing this. I need to song. hear this. Okay. What do you mean? I uh, need to hear it. I why think, do you need to hear it? Because I, just I told that, you. No, I think we just see things online. No, you don't think and girls get it. jealous when you just risen up another. So chip? he made a song called "The Rizzo." No. Yeah. <laughs> and he was risen on Kai. I don't believe that no, stupid like, shit. Like, <laughs> but no, I don't believe you that. You think that you could withstand Tory's Riz? Oh my Taylor, God. Taylor, do you he, think that you could withstand his wrist? He's trying to shoot to me. That's just corny as fuck. Whoa, whoa. What do you mean? Were you in a pool? Now, no. now, this, now, uh, now, out of everything that's been said about Tori this week, that's the most defamation I've heard. Tori he did not try to holler at you. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. what? Wait, Tori? Okay. When he came to the show, yeah. the first time, yes. What do you, how do you try to holler Allegedly. at you? Allegedly. He just came up to me. He was just trying to say I'm something. I'm suing like, you if I'm Tori. Allegedly. <laughs> it's not. A, why? It this be a young lady from Lower Derby. On here, talk about Tori tried to shoot game at her. That's crazy. That's wild. Wait a minute, but okay. what was his? Because I need to learn some of this Riz. Because this Riz, <laughs> this Riz had Meg the Stallion going absolutely berserk. Yo, was your Riz back in the day nice or what? Could you Riz a girl up? Never. Never had good Riz. Never had good. Never. I, that shit would. I, I, I didn't even know where to begin. Quoting rap lyrics and shit. What would you quote? What was your go-to? I bomb atomically. Nah, um, <laughs> you know what Biggie said? You wouldn't walk up to I'd a walk girl. I said, what's your name? What's your sign? You know what I mean? That's what Biggie said. <laughs> That's what Biggie said, son. bro. Son. Biggie said. Son, we gay, bro. You know what I mean? We gay. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Okay, Sometimes you just got to be gay with it, bro. The track is called Yo. Queen and Slim. Queen and Slim. Okay. It was me and Kylie still off in the pool. We was chilling, kicking shit. It was cool. Both of us didn't know you was tripping. Even though I got a crush on Kylie, I would have left with you if I knew you was dipping for the simple reason. I know they using that in court. 
Also, I saw the Why? music. That he's saying. Because you know I, what happened. But I, but I know they're using that in court because it proves it. They also said that they're using one of his comments that he left on Instagram where he said, uh, what's the girl name? Kelsey. What? Kelsey didn't do it. Oh, Some, somebody yeah, said yeah. Kelsey shot and he was like, nah, she did not. Yeah. So it's just like, yo, once again, the court of public opinion. But how know, do we know that Kelsey isn't rizzed up right now? She's in a state of riz. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, no. the law, But no, to your point, the lawyer did say Tory that. The, is, yeah. the lawyer said that it's obvious she's been compromised in some way. By the you riz, I mean? bro. So it said, they said either she's scared or she's been bribed. In or what's the, what's the other that. one? What's the one other thing that could possibly be happening? But that's all riz. Thank you. That's all riz. You know Tori got a master's in risonometry, right? <laughs> it seems like it. So well, maybe she's up on maybe she's up on the stand and she's saying these things, but she's also getting brizzed up by Tori, who's in the courthouse. She hasn't seen this guy in fucking two years. So what do you think happens? <sighs> um, <laughs> this is a tricky one, man. <laughs> this is a fucking tricky one. Okay, I think that <laughs> I think Tori was risen the fuck out of Kylie, right? Megan starts to get super jealous, leaves the party. Okay. I ain't ask you. No, no, no. Wait, I said, what do you think happens? <laughs> Not what do you think happened. What do you think happens in this oh, court case? You want me to tell you what no, happened that man. night, bro? I don't care about that. Come on, <laughs> man. How do you think this court case Yo, ends? See, see how I just, I just rizzed you up. You got <laughs> rizzed up. I got so rizzed up. You got caught up. in my riz. <laughs> no, you I didn't. caught in my riz. You even had to stop yourself. You're like, oh, shit. Like, what's happening? Future happen? prediction. I'm getting colonoscopy again. Like, you had no clue what was happening. <laughs> you, you don't want me to tell you exactly what happened that night no. allegedly allegedly no i don't tory risen <laughs> okay okay, okay? <laughs> he's risen kylia he's doing all sorts of like breaststroke all different strokes okay. he's like i'm such a good swimmer blah blah blah. kylie can barely control herself okay megan sees this happening furious you also have to remember all of this ends in her getting shot whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. exactly that's not true what you mean she didn't get shot she absolutely got she shot. She has bullet fragments no, the that doctor, were in her the, foot the, that the have gone missing somehow. The doctor already confirmed it. No, it didn't. The doctor already confirmed it. Like, even even the, even the defense says she got shot. Even well, what is, a sh what is shot? Bullet <laughs> fragments? Hey, she got shot. They said there's still metal in her feet right now. But what if this man is about to go away for years for something he didn't do? So the joke should be on him. <laughs> like, the joke is on him. I'm saying he's in a pool with floaties in the shallow end. <laughs> sure, <man. laughs> like, like I'm not joking about him too. What are you saying? He's in the four God, feet and with floaties on. I don't want to talk about this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to talk about this. Story. You know what I mean? I just you know that I, is so crazy. I hope about that whatever this. happens in this trial happens. And I, crazy. I hope that justice is served. <laughs> Yo, come on, you're really crazy, bro. This guy is you're nuts, genuinely bro. crazy for not wanting to talk more about this. <laughs> I bet I can make you talk about it if you if I rizzed you up real quick. This guy is so Sitting crazy. Sitting there is your little sweatsuit. Uh. -huh. <laughs> One thing about Andrew. Yo, how do you when, risk listen, a guy? When up? Andrew commits to a role, <laughs> he commits. <laughs> Andrew started this podcast off and said, I'm gay. Yo, and he I'm is saying, not bro. I'm just letting saying, off bro. the gay. Come on, dude. Yo, listen. I'm not gay. <laughs> no, you already committed. You got to be gay until next week. Next week, you can play another character. I'm homosexual, bro. <laughs> gay means happy. You are I ain't gay. happy. Today, you are anus loving Andy. Oh, oh, I love anus. <laughs> Yo, I love <laughs> anus, but I'm not gay. Okay. I love I, anus. I can see that. I'm homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not gay about it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, I'm just, you. I'm homosexual. So bro. what do you identify as? Say what? What do you identify as? The Risenator. The Risenator, baby. Yeah. Add another D1, one. D1000. <laughs> <The D1000. laughs> I'll break your back. Oh, man. Oh, uh, that's not, you know what's so crazy? That's not like a gay vibrator. <laughs> the D1000. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. D1000. You plug it up to the wall. And then just back. back there. Beep, beep, beep. Beep! Move out the way. That's what he's saying to your organs. Oh, man. She's so stupid, man. <laughs> Let's pay some bills, man. <laughs> NordVPN. Let's talk about NordVPN. Salute to NordVPN, You trying VPN, to watch gay man. porn in Saudi Arabia? Ooh. You need a VPN. Ooh. That's real, though. If you're missing out on your favorite show because it's not available in your region, 
You know what I'm saying? Then you need this NordVPN, okay? If you're bored of U.S. Netflix, why not take it for a spin in the U.K.? Using NordVPN and the click of a button, you can do just that. No need to travel to Japan for your favorite anime when NordVPN brings it right to you. With 5,000 plus server options, no show is out of your reach. They've also doubled down on keeping you safe with their new threat protection feature. Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Even if you download an infected file, threat protection kicks in and deletes it before it makes a mess of your computer. It's the price of a cup of coffee every month, a small price to pay for premium cybersecurity and, ex and access to a vast amount of entertaining content from all over the world. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to NordVPN dot com slash brilliant idiots to get a huge discount off your nord vpn plan plus four months for free it's completely risk-free with nord's 30-day money-back guarantee that's nordvpn.com slash brilliant idiots for a discount of your nord vpn plus four months for free you want to do squarespace shows absolutely not got squarespace this man. episode is also brought to you by squarespace okay you need a place on the internet for your business. If you have a business, you don't have a place on the internet, I'm sorry, your business is not legit. Would you trust any business that said, sorry, we don't have a website? No, you would not. You need a place on the business that Squarespace got your back. Not only can you buy the website and the domain, they'll help you build it. And they'll help you build it better than any other platform on the planet, okay? They're gonna help you grow that brand, they're gonna help you grow that business and stand out with beautiful website, engage your audience and sell absolutely anything, your products, your content, you create even your time, okay? Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and give and drive sales. Okay, listen, you can stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it. Applying the brand ingredients like site, colors, and logo. They have built-in analytics to measure the impact of every single send. I'm telling you guys... You can do it all and improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Right now, if you head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, let's get back to the show. Let's get back to the show. What else we got, Taylor? Give us some shit you won't care about next week, man. Oh, Duval, damn, we didn't talk about that. Well, we we're talking about the assistance situation. Yes. Uh, Duval tweeted, if you can't afford to work for free for some years, then the entertainment business is not what you want to be in. Go to school or learn a trade. Mm. Thoughts, Andrew Schultz. Yeah, Thoughts. absolutely. Absolutely. The more desirable the the industry, the more you're, the longer you're going to have to work for free. Simple as that. Like, I mean, you don't have to work for free if you work at McDonald's at all. You just start working immediately because yeah. it's not as desired to work there. Now, that's not to say it's not an honorable profession, but if you want to be in entertainment, which is a far more desired field, you're going to have to put years of free work into it. I did that shit with stand-up. I'm sure you did you know, close to that with radio. Come on now. Of course. You know what I mean? I that's why I agree with uh, Duval wholeheartedly. I think that yeah. you have to recognize opportunity when there's not a paycheck attached to it. And uh, one, But one thing I'm Hearing when I when I talk to these youngins, you know, they're saying things like, you know, even if it's not for free, we need to be having a livable wage. And I think that's where that's where they 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 mess up at because they have these entry level positions in the entertainment business and they want a livable wage for it. No. You know what else I had when I was uh, young on the come up? I had like three gigs. I did telemarketing. I worked at a clothing store in the mall yeah. and I was working part time at the radio station. There's never been. Uh, there's never been a moment in my life where I, I, I only had one gig. Even yeah. now, I don't just have one gig. Or live I mean? at home if you can. Like, if you have parents that will support Same. your dream, live at home. That's what so many people are able to That's do. Right. Not everybody's able to do it because if you need to move to Los Angeles or New York or whatever to pursue your career, it's hard. But if you can pursue that career in entertainment from home, stay the fuck home. And I talk about this in my first book, man, but there's 168 hours in a week. Hmm. That is more than enough time to pursue your dream, but also deal with your reality. Because hmm. the reality is, you're probably going to have bills to pay. The reality is, you know, you're going to have probably have rent and stuff to pay. So find other gigs to supplement that income while you're pursuing your dream. Yeah. Like, I don't know who told people that you got to spend every waking minute, every waking hour 
you know, pursuing your dream. Now, yeah. I think this conversation stemmed from Glorilla because she got backlash for saying that she has a personal assistant job salary of five fifty per week. Uh, I think the math when you do it is like twenty eight thousand five hundred something a year. It just depends on what you're asking this assistant to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're full time assistant. Are they part time assistant? That's do they right. Have to travel with you. That's right. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot of different things. Also, like maybe that's what she can afford. I think a lot of times we assume that people in music are making a lot of money. And a lot of these people are not making a lot no. of money. So that's, they're incredibly busy because they have all these events that they have to go to and they have to like live this lifestyle that we perceive as someone who's this multimillionaire. But a lot of them are not making that much money at all. And for her to come out of pocket 550, you know, a week, that's probably the most she could spend on something like that. I've always been told I overpay. Hmm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I've always yeah. been told that I overpay for, Good. you know, cer certain certain positions. Like, you know, that this is apparently is what assistants should be making. But nah, once again, that's not necessary. I don't think so. No, no. I, I think assistants generally make between like uh, fifty and seventy thousand dollars a year. That's where I was at with it. Executive assistants make over a hundred. They can make up to two hundred thousand dollars. But executive assistants are with the person all day, every so our day. They, 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 executive they, is more with business shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I mean, listen, man. And that's the other thing. People say, well, you know, y'all generation struggled. Y'all just want us to struggle. Yo, nah, motherfuckers. We just telling y'all the reality of the situation. Also, don't do it. You don't got to be in this business. Yeah, like, the, the thing that people are you to do it for the price you want. You know the thing that Duval said in his tweet that people forget about? If not, go get a trade or something. Exactly. Go learn Go go learn a trade. Also, 550 is what you start at, right? Like, if you That's come right. in the business and you prove that you are helping her make $2,000 a week for yes. the 550 that she's paying you, you don't think it's easy for her to give you a raise? You can be up to 1000 in no time. Right, because it's like, wow, you're providing two thousand dollars of of income That's right. for the thousand or the five fifty that I'm paying you. So go there, prove yourself, and then get more money. You're right, and I also wondered too, man. And maybe this was just our generation because we didn't know no better. I was never thinking about money. Yeah, I just wanted the opportunity. Everything yeah. else I could figure out. Mm -hmm. Like, like when I finally moved out of my mama house because of the No Scrubs song, when when <laughs> when when TLC made No Scrubs, you know. And I realized, like, I cannot be the person still living at home with their mama. And I started doing radio in Columbia, South Carolina. I was making $6 an hour. Mm. I moved to Columbia, South Carolina. My mama, thankfully, let me get a mattress. You know what I mean? Back then, I think rent might have been like $550 in Columbia, South Carolina, something like that. I had a mattress and a, a small-ass TV on the floor. But I didn't care. And I wasn't promised a full-time job at all. What Chris Connors told me at Hot 103.9 then was I could... uh. I could do hours. I could come in every night and do these four hourly hours at $6 an hour, $8 an hour, whatever it was. And I just figured it out. Mm. To be honest with y'all, I don't know how I survived yeah. back then. But that wasn't my mindset. My mindset wasn't, oh, we need, I got to make money. I got to make money. I got to make money. I just want the opportunity yeah. to be heard because yeah. I believe in myself that much. And I know eventually all of this shit is going to pay off. I mean, when you play a sport, you don't, get paid at all until you're professional and you dedicate your entire life to it. You actually pay to be part of these leagues that you're in. You pay to be part of these to the, these uh, these uh, camps that you go to to get mm -hmm. better. Like, you are paying money and the reason you're willing to pay money is because it's so exclusive to be professional in that sport. I think the difference people will tell you is though most of those people when they're in college, they got room and board. They're getting taken I'm care of. I'm saying before college. I'm saying when your parents are paying for you to go to camps every single summer oh, since you're you, fucking you, eight you, years you. old. Like, I'm saying when you're investing in these trainers, you're investing in these different programs, like you're investing so much into this career that you hope pans out and you can make tons of money. The more desirable the career, the more that you're going to have to invest in, in it in order to be part of it. I agree with you, but you're also speaking about people from a certain class and background because there's people that like that are poor and disenfranchised who the who only reason they're even getting that opportunity to be taken care of in that way is because of their extreme Talent. athletic ability. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. they're investing their time. They're interning. That's true. No, they're interning right. as a professional basketball no, player. You're right. You know, I'm just saying if you want something bad enough and it's an exclusive enough industry, you're going to have to work for free. You're you just going to have to. Forgetting something that I feel like, because now we have Instagram and everyone wants to flex, uh, flex now. So. Who fault is that? No, but I'm just saying, though, that's why people care. I feel like more about the money. They see all these other people flexing with what they got, all these materialistic stuff. They want to have that. Like, they want to show off. I think that that's money. part of it, but I also think it's the LLC generation. It's the, it's the I own 100% or nothing. 
and I know my worth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it's that that mentality too. Like yeah. that is like you own a hundred percent of nothing, and you know your worth. So you, how dare you feel? How dare you work for free? You you above working for free? Are you above working for you know what you call not a livable wage? Yeah. My advice yeah. to all of y'all is: it's 168 hours in a week. That's more than enough time to chase your dream and deal with your reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, get other jobs to supplement your income. And when people come to me and they say things like, well, "I shouldn't have to work more than one job," well, you're practicing bad habits. Yeah, because I was always taught that you got to have six to seven different sources of income. You know what I'm saying? Right. And 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 if and if you're the boss that you say you are, even when you create those six or seven different sources of income, you're still working for yourself. Yeah. So you have to have more than one job, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and ma'am. It, you have to have more, more than one job depending on what you want out of life. Like there are tons of people who work one job and then want to spend the most of their time in nature. They want to go camping. They want to go hunting. Yeah. Like they actually want a job that gives them as much free time as possible. So that's also it depends on what you want. If you want to be a millionaire. Buddy, no one's going to hand you a million dollars. You're going to have to work for it. If you want something else, then maybe you can have that one job. These are all your choices. It's all about choice. Yeah. And I will it, I will say this, though. What? We got to wrap this podcast up. Yeah, we got we to gotta wrap We got to wrap this podcast up because we're taping at WTF and Alex is kicking us the fuck out. This is yeah, fucked up. That you is fucked I mean? up. Because in a lot of ways, we built this studio, bro. Damn, bro. I'm just wow. saying, Alex. Damn, there should be bro. some type of <laughs> like, some, like preferential treatment yes, or something, man, right? Just a little bit. You Y'all know what I mean? Like get yo, thrown around like it's nothing. People know the idiots is here, bro. Yo, and you got we give them That's a 15 facts. minute grace period, something. You know what I mean? Yo, that is a good ass. Just point. a little bit. Like That's I know y'all got a 12 schedule. You would think. You would think. <laughs> wow. That a black business would support you know two black creators. I think so. <laughs> but, I think so. But but I, I guess so. not, bro. They like he like get the fuck out so yeah but we do have the new brilliant idiot studio <laughs> opening you know what yeah I mean? and uh in the top oh of the year God, excited you know? about that that's right so we'll never get kicked out of our studio we'll never we will never and we would never kick you out alex yeah we're not gonna Thank kick you, you out, out of never, studio, bro. we will never kick you out of shaking my head studios when we open it <laughs> shaking shaking my my head <laughs> in, in in january okay? i appreciate that guys but i <laughs> right. also appreciate you being here as well who you got coming up though? i need to know who you're kicking us out for i don't know actually Oh wow! Wow, he knows. Wow, he nah, knows. I don't know. That's you know? crazy. It's just like, just like so many people kind of. Like, <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Kinda, you hear that flex? <laughs> big <laughs> stuff. Hear that flex. Uh, we'll be back next week, though. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm done for the year, but I, we got the, one more in us, guys. Yeah, we got one more in us for the year. We got one more in and us. Disconnecting, man. We're going um, out with a bang. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.